All right, so pretty excited that I was able to get my hands on this. It's not often that I'm able to get new stuff before a lot of people, um, especially when it comes to kind of the higher end price point of guns. But from the moment I kind of saw this particular release from Springfield Armory, I knew I had to get my hands on one. Now, for those of you who haven't heard, um, this is essentially the Springfield Armory DS, which stands for double stack. Now, this is their take on a 2011 model. And interestingly enough, it has a lot of similar characteristics to your higher end guns, but of course those can cost upwards of anywhere from 3,000 starting all the way up to 10,000, depending on the manufacturer. So coming in at $1,500, um, essentially for an optics ready pistol with blacked out with a fiber optic front. I mean, the sighting system's pretty much perfect. And of course, they use the Agency Arms plate system, which has a backup rear sight. I haven't mounted an optic to it yet, just because the gun is so new that the plates for it are still on pre-order. So I'm awaiting that, but once I get the optic mounted up, I'm definitely gonna do another review, uh, just to kind of see how that sight system's holding up overall. Now, I'll kind of go through what I like and what I don't like just upon initial inspection, you know, just getting everything situated. Um, one thing with this gun specifically that I really did like is it has a lot of oversized controls. Um, the other thing too that I can say that's really, really nice is the texturing is spot on. I probably won't change the grip at all and it has a very balanced weight. I wanna say even with my red dot and uh, my light, I'm really not gonna be exceeding 45 ounces fully loaded, which it sounds like a lot, but compared to some of the shadows that some other people are running and that kind of thing, they can get up there. Now, one thing in particular that I do believe the firearm is going to need out of the box, just to let you know, I have the five inch model. Um, but the slide feels a little sluggish. I mean, of course, every 1911 that I've owned has needed some type of break-in period. Uh, but honestly, I would just recommend it feels a little undersprung. So I'm going to try changing out the recoil spring with a Nighthawk number 12 and see if that kind of fixes everything, you know, just because overall, I think by default, it's gonna have a nine pound recoil spring. And that just seems incredibly light compared to a lot of similar offerings. And I, I understand the idea behind it, but again, if the gun doesn't run reliably, what's the point in having lower recoil or, you know, it just doesn't seem like it was really uh, well thought out when it came to it. But that's just my personal opinion. Some people are getting ones that want, run great straight out of the box. Uh, that was not my uh, experience, but I can tell you overall, I'm very pleased with the purchase. Um, I can't tell you really any gun that I've bought that I haven't done something to it to either make it more reliable or function better for my purposes. So it's really nothing new. A couple springs here and there really isn't gonna break the bank as well. And that, that's just a, a really good way to kind of guarantee reliability. Now, of course, I've ordered some additional mags. I've heard it's compatible with all the other 2011 double stack magazines. So just based off most manufacturing specs, um, the handles are gonna be very similar as far as the actual frame portion. And most of the magazines I've heard are interchangeable, but I'm gonna test it out with some Triarc mags and I will definitely let you know if that's not the case. A couple other quick things as well. Um, with the five inch model in particular, I definitely feel like it's going to be a little bit more difficult to find, um, I would say compatible holsters. Every holster company, at least for the moment that I was looking at, uh, had ones for the 4.25 inch, but did not have ones for the five. Now, of course, that just means your muzzle's gonna poke out, but if you're shooting fast or shooting a lot, as you know, no one likes getting burned in an unfun place. So just as far as that, I would kind of be on the lookout for some new developments as far as holsters. Uh, I actually got one from QVO Tactical, so I'm awaiting that one with this TLR1S on it. So hopefully that works out very nice. A Couple of other things. I mean, I can tell that this trigger compared to some of the other offerings that we've had um, from other 2011s and 1911s alike, I can tell this trigger is not necessarily the lightest trigger I've ever shot. It definitely 
feels like it was meant for kind of like an in-between of duty slash uh, kind of co competition or speed shooting, I would say. But overall, I would definitely give this pistol a very high rating. Um, I mean, changing out a recoil spring here and there, no big deal. Uh, the other thing I like is this Ambi safety here really does have a positive click. So there's really a very low chance of a mishap happening, especially because if I do ever carry concealed, I like carrying appendix. So this just kind of ensures that uh, I will definitely be notified if that switch is off. But of course you have the grip safety and a lot of other good features that I definitely can appreciate. Can live with them, can live without them, but at the end of the day, you know, they're really not gonna get in my way. The other thing I like too is that of course the mag release here is pretty pretty stout and also it sticks out just a little bit there. That way I have bigger hands so I can kind of get it on, but I have to break my grip still a little bit. So I might make some alterations. But other than that, I think it's a very solid firearm overall. I mean, the machining, every bit of work that went into this, I can tell is quality. They definitely took their time. I can't wait to mount an optic to it and then just kind of have the full experience. But I'm definitely very excited for what this might mean for 2011s in the future, especially making them more affordable for the average shooter. You know, I think that's important because very few people can afford to take out a second mortgage, you know, in order to uh, fund some high quality 2011. So I kind of like the idea of using this as a shell and then replacing it over time with Wilson Combat, Nighthawk, you know, insert quality brand here. Uh, but aside from that, I bought this with my own money. This wasn't sent to me. It wasn't given to me, you know, so just as far as that pretty unbiased review. But overall, I definitely think that it's worth it. If you guys see this and you're interested in it at all, I would say pick it up, you know? I definitely think it's gonna be very hard to find. I know in my particular area, I live in Arizona, it's pretty much non-existent right now. Uh, the guy actually at the gun shop said that I got one of the last ones. So just be on the lookout. There's a 4.25 inch and a five inch barrel. So really just depends on personal preference. I like the government personally. That's just kind of my preference when it comes to 1911, 2011 style guns. Never really been a huge uh, commander size fan, but that's again, all personal preference. But aside from that, be on the lookout for some other reviews. Uh, I'll kind of go over a more in-depth look once it's actually finished. And uh, of course, I hope you guys enjoy, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff.